How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. Hey, remember how I said to you that I wasn't going to be doing any more of those he ya hi -ya? I don't even know how you pronounce it. The Injustice 2 figures, the really small ones after I did the Superman and the Batman, I was like, oh, I'm not really that impressed with them. They're okay. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fork out any more money for them. Well, guess what? Hia Toys decided they were going to send me three of them to review for you. So I'm going to do just that in this video right now today. Starting with everyone's favorite badass used to be dead Robin, Jason Todd, the Red Hood. Full disclaimer, I still have yet to play Injustice 2, so expect absolutely no references to the game. Anyhow, front of the box has a great big window so you can see everything on the inside. We've gone through this before. You're supposed to be able to see everything on the inside, so it's doing its job properly. You got the Injustice 2 logo, Red Hood there on the bottom. Not for zero to three. Don't give this to your kids. It's such a big deal. They actually put it right here. Warning! If you give it to your kids, it'll explode in their hands and then they'll have no fingers. Injustice 2 Red Hood logo on the top and on the side right here. It's all the exact Say, why is it always upside down when I turn it? Jeez, look at that, upside down, of course. And on the back, you've got all the other gobbledygook. Exquisite Mini is a new standard setting series for 1 18th scale featuring super articulation action figures under HIA Toys. Here's that there fancy barcode that a lot of people like to see. And here's some images of the figure. These are actually the paint prototypes. The one that we're gonna get is actually not gonna be quite as good as this. Still though, Looks promising. Let's open it up. I want to break free. Inside we got this little Daily Planet card that's all messed up. I like this. It's, I don't know where I would ever use it, but this is pretty cool. And then we got the figure with all of the stuff and the things and the bits. Oh, this stuff's taped in. Hang on a second. And there we go. Stuck to the tape. Goodbye. 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 All right, and here he is out of the package so far. I'm actually really, really impressed in comparison to how I was with the Superman and the Batman. He comes with these two little tiny pistols here. They're painted neat. They're sculpted nicely. These are very, very cool looking. He also comes with this little tiny, I'm assuming it's a grenade of some kind. I honestly have no idea because I haven't played the game. Clearly this is some kind of flashbang or smoke bomb or something like that. He comes with the cutest little knife you've ever seen. Again, it's done neat and tidy. And he comes with these two little weensy tiny extra fists. He also comes with the shiny stand here and these two letter H's for sticking in here and connecting to other stands. Oh, they just, oh, they fall out all the time. I never use these stands. They actually go right back in the package. And then we get Red Hood, who in my opinion looks absolutely fantastic. Really, like this figure is going a long way in winning me back to the Hia Haya, I still don't know how to pronounce it, toys in Justice 2 action figures. The Superman did not really impress me that much, and the Batman was pretty good, but again, I wasn't really impressed with these two. This one's actually a pretty good home run, let's look at him up close to see why. So for starters, the figure actually captures the look of Red Hood in Injustice 2 very, very well. Even though I haven't played the game, you don't have to be a detective to compare images of the game Red Hood versus the figure Red Hood to see that this is actually pretty good as far as likeness goes. All of the paint apps on this figure look pretty fantastic. It's painted really, really neat for the most part. There's not a lot of paint slop almost anywhere, so there really are no complaints about the overall execution of this Red Hood figure because they just did such a good job with him. I'm very, very, very impressed with him. One thing to note, his elbow pads are actually separate and they can slide off. So you just gotta be a little bit careful with them, you know, when you're posing him and taking pictures that they don't slide down and off of his wrists. But the fact that his jacket is made out of a nice soft brown leather with the two-tone paint, that's pretty cool. And not only do you have the gun holsters made out of a soft rubber that look good, as well as the knife holster, but they're also utilitarian. Kind of. The gun doesn't really fit in the holster, actually. So I'm assuming they just kind of expect you to have them hold on to them. Okay, you know what? I take that back. The holsters for the gun aren't utilitarian at all. <laughs> they're just cosmetic. But the little tiny boot knife sheath, you just gotta push it in there. Ah, there. And it fits right in his leg like that. 
Cool. And oh yeah, the face. Let's look at that. The face sculpt and paint for this figure is pretty much immaculate in comparison to the previous two Hia toys, Superman and Batman, that I reviewed because you've got the silver and you got the black in the eyes and some black two tones and it's painted neatly and tidy and all the paint is exactly where it's supposed to be. So absolutely no complaints. Switching hands, as you would expect, is obviously pretty easy. First, we've got him with the guns and his hands like that and you just pop off the hand, you've got a little peg there, and then you just pop the new one right on the, you just pop it, oh, that's a tight fit. Ugh, well that's good, I guess that means it's not gonna fall off anytime soon. And then you can pop the grenade right in his hand like that, so that's kind of neat that he's got hands pretty much for everything. Red Hood doesn't have a hand specifically for this, but it does fit into one of his gun hands, and it looks pretty good for what it is. And his final hand actually is specific to his boot knife. Oh, again, that's a nice tight fit, so it's not going to be falling off anytime soon. So he does have a nice array of hands and accessories to go with this guy. His articulation is also pretty good. It's going to be typical of the Hia Toy stuff. So they've got articulation up here under the torso. They've got articulation in the waist. They got the ball jointed groin. They got rotating right here. They got the double jointed knees. They got articulation here kind of, I would call that above the boot, just boot articulation. They have ankles that are on a hinge and also on a pivot. They got the the hinge swivel shoulders. They got the elbows that are single jointed, but they also rotate, which is cool. I like the rotating elbows if they're not gonna be double jointed. He's got the ball jointed wrists and he's got a head that as you can see here is on, I guess you can't, I'm not gonna pull it off. He's got a head on a ball peg and the neck is on a ball peg. So these for what they are, are actually really well articulated. So this Red Hood figure not only gets a pass as far as I'm concerned, but he passes with flying colors. And next we have Harley. And the package for Harley is the same as all the rest of them. Big window box, you can see all the stuff on the inside as you would expect. You got an image of Harley here, the actual figure, not just the video game. You got the Injustice 2 logo, he had toys, not for zero to three. You got Injustice logos kind of all around, just like with the previous one. And every time I turn it, oh, except for that time, they're always upside down. And then you got the back of the box, which has images of the figure. This is actually the prototype. Remember that it's not the actual figure. You got phone numbers, you got gobbledygook, you got a barcode here on the back. Yeah, pretty much your standard issue injustice to Hia Toys action figure packaging. Let's open it. And now it's Harley's turn to come out and play. Here's what you get. Don't fall on your face, Harley. Hate for you to get scratched and damaged. Oh, ah, that's everything. No, it's not. There's something right here. Mm. She's got herself a little knife. Wow, that's a lot of stuff in the package. Harley comes with a mallet, and as far as I'm concerned, this is probably the coolest looking Harley Quinn mallet I've ever seen. And she comes with a bat. For doing pretty much the same thing, just this is like Brain Crusher, and this is like Brain Crusher Light. I like this. I like it a lot. She also comes with a little bitty knife. And again, just like everything else, seems like the paint has been executed really nicely. It's really, really small. Like, it's hard to get this up close. She also comes with these two little red and black Harley pistols, which look fantastic and have been sculpted and painted just as nice as everything else. And two extra hands for holding stuff. And of course, she's got a stand with some H's. Of course. And of course, we have the figure, which is the reason for all the hoopla in the first place. And just looking at her quickly, without really sticking her under that up close eye of the action figure review, I think that she looks good. I think that the paint for this figure looks really nice. You've got two-tone shading in the red. And again, just like the Red Hood figure, it really seems like all the paint has gone where it's supposed to go. And looking at it up close, that's confirmed. For something so small, she actually looks really good. And again, having not played the game, I don't need to be a rocket scientist to just pull up a picture of what she looks like online and say, you know, she actually looks close enough to the game images that I think if you're a fan of Injustice 2, I think you'd be satisfied with her. All of her buckles on her boots have been painted tidy enough as well as her knee pads. And you've got the various diamonds here and designs on her gun holsters, which just at a glance, I can tell you that these are definitely way more useful than the ones that were on Red Hood, her belts, you got her bustier with all the leather straps and stuff like that. The black line on the top of her bosoms there. You've got her jacket, her elbow pads. Like this really is a very neat and tidy looking figure. And the face as well. This face for what it is, for how small it is, actually looks pretty good. It doesn't look 
extremely like Harley Quinn, but let's remember this is something that is much, much smaller than we're used to reviewing. And I definitely think that they did a bit better of a job on Harley than they did on Superman and on Batman with his wonky painted eye. So this, this series here, I think this would be series two, they definitely brought the quality control up a notch compared to the last wave because I'm impressed with her as well. The pistols, as you can see, do fit in the holsters. As I had surmised while looking at her up close, they fit right in there and look pretty fabulous. Now the hands that come installed on the figure when you take her out of the package, they're actually the gun hands with the trigger fingers, so that's exactly what that looks like. And then she's also got these two hands that fit on the ball joints, and I do want to point out to be very careful because this ball peg on the end here, where you connect it, I can see it bending when I try to stick it on there like that. I can totally see that being a problem if you're not careful. Okay, hold the phone. In the name of transparency, I need to show you this. I'm now finished recording the video. It's the next day, and I'm just sitting here taking some of the photos that I'm going to insert in the video, and wouldn't you know it, the thing that I warned all of you about, the ball peg snapped off of her wrist. It's inside of her fist. I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. I wasn't abusing the figure at all. I was simply pulling the ball peg off, trying to be careful about it as well, might I add, and it just popped right off. This one here, as you can see, doesn't have a lot of meat right there for it to attach to, so it snapped off. In the name of transparency, I wanted to show you this. Hia Toys, if you're watching, this is a structural integrity issue that needs to be solved in the quality control area before it gets shipped out to people, because I gotta tell you, as much as I do like this wave of figures, if I paid 20 bucks American for this, if you hadn't have sent it to me specifically to review, if I was a consumer of these, I would be very upset right now that it snapped and I'd be looking for a replacement. Okay. Now let's go back to the video. But obviously these hands are for holding her brain smasher mallet or her bat or even perhaps just her knife. Although technically her knife has a little hole in it like that for the finger. So maybe you could get away with using one of the trigger hands for this as well. Now Harley's articulation in comparison to Red Hood is gonna be a little bit different. For one, although she does have that head that is on a ball peg, she doesn't have any neck articulation when you lift up that soft rubber jacket. And although she does have articulation in the waist, it really isn't super usable. She does have the ball joints down there. However, no rotating power up here where the rest of them do. She has double jointed knees, which is good. No articulation here at the top of the boot, but she does have ankles that are on hinges and also pivots. As for dim arms though, she's got the ball hinge right here, single jointed rotating elbows, and we know that there's ball joints in the wrist right here. So that's pretty much what you're gonna get for articulation for Harley. For the most part, I do gotta say that I'm pretty much satisfied with Harley. I don't think she's as good as the Red Hood, but I certainly think that she's, again, better than the previous Superman, and at least on par with the Batman. Now let's move on. We have Swamp Thing, a character that I'm always happy to see more figures made of because he's a fantastic character. If you don't know much about him, I would seriously say just go read everything you can on Swamp Thing because he's a really awesome character. And I am so stoked that they added him to Injustice 2. Anyhow, packaging, you know what it is. Big window, look at all that stuff on the inside. You can see the figure. You got the Injustice 2 logo, he your toys. You got Swamp Thing down here in the bottom corner. You know the drill, Injustice 2 logos all over the side of the box, absolutely everywhere, because they don't want you to not know or forget what you're looking at. On the back, we have images of the prototype figure right here. We have the barcode that some people like to have scanned on their computer so they can go find it. We have all the phone numbers and the gobbledygook, and that's it. Pretty much par for the course. Let's take him out. Emancipation! Here's what we get. They always fall over every time. Box, already seen it. Goodbye. Dumpity dump. Ooh, this one is big and girthy. He's a girthy swamp thing. How fantastic. I'm looking at him before I look at all this stuff. I just can't help myself. He's got green with a brown wash over him. He looks really, really fantastic. What a rad looking figure. I love it so much. Look at this guy. Wow. Got the, I'm assuming this is bark and stuff like that for shoulder pads. Again, I haven't played the game, so I'm not going to be completely accurate in my description, but just look at that. That looks awesome. What a fantastic looking figure. 
Looking up close, you can really begin to appreciate the detail and the sculpt for this figure because all the paint has gone into the cracks and they just bring out every nook and cranny, every vine, every little piece of wooden armor for his shins and his shoulders. Everything looks fantastic and they've done a superb job in executing him and the scale of this figure in comparison to the rest, his body proportions look really nice as well, so I'm absolutely fantastically happy with him. The face sculpt for this Swamp Thing looks pretty good too, looks fairly accurate to the game, and again, Again, the detail and all the paint, everything's gone exactly where it's supposed to be, so I really have no complaints there as well. So far, incredibly satisfied and stoked with this figure in every way. Hia Toys, again, with this one, seems to have completely knocked it out of the park. Now as for accessories, he comes with this great big piece of question mark shaped snot. And we'll just take some time to appreciate all of its boogery details in the... I'm just kidding. This isn't snot. <laughs> this is his weapon. And he comes with two closed punchy punch fists for punching. That's what you do with punchy fists. His articulation, he's got it under the torso there. He doesn't have any in the waist. Bye-bye waist articulation. He's got some in the groin there, and he's got some rotation. The, the, the design of the figure does kind of get... Oh, look at that. That's way more than I thought it was going to have. He's got double-jointed knees, and they crunch, crunch, crunch. You've got his ankles, which, of course, are going to be hinges that are also on pivots. You've got his shoulders, which the armor does get in the way somewhat. It, it is rubber. You can move it up, but I would not want to move it too much just in case it breaks. And this one here, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Do it for the video. That's nice and soft, actually. So he actually has a full range of motion there in his shoulders with a hinge. He's got the rotating single jointed and he's got the ball hinge in the wrists right there. And then from the shoulders up, he's got the head which is on a ball joint because you know, they all are, but he's also got this extra hinge right here for moving back and forth. I think that's cool. I like that. Here he is, club in hand. That's exactly what you're gonna get. You can put it in this hand, or of course you can put it in this hand. I don't think it really matters. Do you care, Swamp Thing? No, didn't think so. Oh yeah, and of course, I forgot to mention, he comes with a stand, but y'all knew that, right? So now that we've looked at these figures, which were sent to me from Hia Toys, free of charge, but I was still on the hook to make this video, of course. Like I say, always, no free product is actually free product you're on the hook to make a video. Now that I've looked at them, I can definitely say that my opinion of Hia Toys Injustice 2 offerings is definitely different than it was when I reviewed the Superman and the Batman. I wasn't very impressed with them. However, Harley, Red Hood, and Swamp Thing have gone a long way to refine that opinion to something that is absolutely worth collecting. I'm not gonna lie, of course I wish that these were like two inches bigger at least. Really small figures just ain't my jam. But for what we're getting here, the Red Hood, the Swamp Thing, they look absolutely fantastic and they steal the show as far as I'm concerned. But certainly if you're a fan of Injustice 2, you're absolutely going to want to pick these guys up, at least the Red Hood and the Swamp Thing, because they do not disappoint, I promise you. Well, I don't know if I can promise. In my opinion, there we go, my opinion, these guys are fantastic. And that's my review and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, found it useful. If you have, please take the time to leave a like on it. You want to become a super friend, join the DC squad. That's simple. You just hit the subscribe button and notify yourself of when I put out new videos by dinging that magical bell. And if you have any comments at all, you know where they go, pop them down below and I will see you with the next video. Thank you so much, super friends, for taking the time to watch it. And I will see you next time. Have a DC day, everybody. Take care.